What up? It's Edward with Brain Trust Creative. I'm gonna show you six ways to build an entire look for an event from just a logo. Now here at Brain Trust, we design events. Part of that is graphics. So stage looks, lower thirds, presentation templates, and everything else. Now, if you work in events, you know, clients don't always give you everything you would like to have to create those graphics. A lot of times they just give you the bare minimum which is just their logo. Uh, so now it's your job to take that logo and build it out into a whole visual language so you can give them a graphics package for their event. So here are six ways for doing that to make your life easier. So here's a logo we got for a virtual event we produced. Now ideally you wanna work with a vector file, so EPS, AI, SVG, etc. In our case, which is actually a pretty common case, all we had was a PNG in all its pixely goodness. If you're lucky enough to have a vector already, you can skip this step. Basically, to make it into a vector logo, I remade it in Illustrator. For the light bulb on the left, I built some shapes and aligned them to the PNG. For the text, I took a screenshot of the text, I uploaded it to Font Squirrels What the Font, and then I found out that the font was actually Railway. Fortunately, Railway is a pretty popular font. We already had it. So I just typed it out, adjusted the tracking and kerning to match their PNG. Then I had a vectorized logo. Now I'm not gonna get too deep into how to recreate any logo in Illustrator. There's plenty of tutorials about that that you can find. Let's get started on building this into an event look. First, you wanna start looking at it deconstructed. Ask yourself, what are the smaller pieces of this logo that add up to make the larger logo? At a glance, there's four parts that I can see, okay? So there's the text on the right, there's this bulb shape, and there's inside the bulb these four circles, and then underneath, there's these coils. These are all the things that add up to make the larger logo. Everything is colored in two colors. Looks like blue is primary, yellow is secondary. All right, tip number one, build patterns. Which of these deconstructed elements would make a nice pattern? At first, I thought, oh, these dots. You know, I could just repeat these dots and it would make a really simple pattern. But I tried that and it looked like polka dots. That's not really what we wanted for a corporate event. So I decided to go with the bulb with the dots inside the bulb and try to make a pattern from that. I'd say for 90% of logos, there is some element in there that can be repeated and turned into a pattern to make things a lot more interesting across the board. And you can see that in this picture in picture setup that I have here that the pattern adds a lot of visual interest to the slide. All right, tip number two, scale. Many times there's some part of the logo that can be really useful if it's blown up way bigger than any of the other parts of the logo. So here's an example of a speaker announcement graphic that uses the top portion of the light bulb to create a little cutout for the speaker. And here's another example of how I used the same part of the logo and scaled it up to use as a design element. So a lot of times when I scale something up, I also dial down its opacity so it can be used as a background element without clashing with the foreground too much, which which brings us to tip number three, overlay. A quick way to make something more visually interesting is to let the elements lay on top of each other. So here, I've combined scale with overlay, placing the foreground element on top of a scaled up light bulb, then lowering the opacity of the background to help add some depth. You can use varying opacities for pretty interesting results. You can even introduce some shapes and overlay them without changing any opacity, like you see I've done here on tons of different looks for this event. Tip number four is repetition. Now, everything we talked about is pretty much some form of repetition. Patterns are repeatable, duplicating different parts of the logo to scale and overlay them, that's repeating. Repetition is super important in a visual language because it gives the whole thing some cohesion. That's how you make it feel like one language. But just to give a specific example here, you'll see I took these four dots from within the light bulb in the logo and just repeated them in different formations to use throughout the look. It's a super simple copy paste that adds depth and visual interest. Tip number five, gradients. Most obvious use is taking brand colors and blending them together. I didn't think it fit for this event to do that, but you can see for another client, I made heavy use of gradients here. If it fits, using color gradients can be a great tool. The less obvious use of gradients is using a gradient mask to gradually hide different backgrounds and elements. So one simple example is with the patterns. Maybe having a pattern across the entire screen is a bit much or a little busy, but using a gradient mask to hide it gradually can be super useful in certain situations. And last but not least is tip number six, shapes. Even after doing all the above, I still felt like I wanted a bit more to play with for this event, so I introduced some simple rectangles and combined them with the other tips, scaling them, repeating them, overlaying them, and so on. Depending on the brand, you might even be able to get away with more interesting shapes, like circles, or brackets, 
or triangles, even just plain old lines. So that's that. Using these six tips, I was able to build out keynote templates, live stream picture and picture arrangements, name badges, promotional graphics, and even this lower third. So next time you gotta make content for a live stream or conference or whatever other event you're producing, use these six tips to build out a visual language that'll hopefully get you going. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Make sure to tag us at Braintrust Creative if you use these tips to create anything, we'd love to see it. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can hear the next time I come out with some more design tips to help you beef up your events. Peace.